Welcome back to Wiseman Company, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about SBRs, pistols, rifles chambered in pistol caliber cartridges. Not handguns in the traditional sense. We're talking about longer guns, PCCs, subguns. And I get this question asked a lot. Should I do it? Should I build one? Is it worth it? Uh, what's going to be the best route to take? And today I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. Um, this type of firearm has gotten very popular over the last couple of years. The competition world has opened up to PCCs. Uh, it just seems like everybody's getting in on it. A lot of manufacturers out there offering them new parts and accessories. And they do fill a role for me, a uh, very specific role, but they do have a place in my mind. I've only gotten into them as of recently. A lot of you have seen my CZ Scorpion on the channel. I think it's great. It took a lot to get it to that point, but we'll get in that into that in a little bit. There's four main traits that I think really make the PCC or the subgun that make these worthwhile. First being compactness. You can get these firearms really small. You can get them really, really compact. These are great to stick in backpacks, vehicles, store somewhere. The size is, is just awesome. You can't really do that with rifle calibers, uh, platforms. You can, I mean, blackout you can get pretty short, but I mean, five inch nine millimeter sub guns and AR9s are just really compact. And then throw a folder on it and you have a nice, neat little package. Compatibility is the second part. Uh, if you're running an AR9, usually it's chambered in a Glock magazine of some sort. The older AR9s take Colt mags, but the, the Glock compatibility, especially if you already have a bunch of Glock handguns, the compatibility there is, is convenient. It's awesome. Uh, you can just take one of your mags out of your gun, stick it into another one, and you're good to go. With this Angstead Arms here, you can run this thing the whole way down to a Glock 26 mag. I have a 33 round mag in it right now, but the combat compatibility is really, really nice in my mind. These guns suppress well. 9mm, 45, it suppresses well. 9mm, 147 grain, of course. We all know 45 ACP suppresses really well. Pistol caliber just makes sense. Uh, I don't think it makes a lot of sense on an actual handgun, but on these guns, uh, it just makes them that much more pleasurable and enjoyable to shoot, especially indoors. Lastly, these are cheap to shoot. Nine millimeter is some of the cheapest ammo you can get in bulk right now. Uh, 45, not so much, but uh, nine millimeter is everywhere um, and you can get it in bulk, shipped to your door and it's usually pretty inexpensive. The subsonic stuff, the specific suppressor, nine millimeter can be a little bit more expensive, but for the most part, to feed this thing is gonna be really inexpensive. You can get a lot of shooting done with a PCC. So that's what these guns do do well. They also do some stuff not so well. Distance being one of them, they don't have a really great max effective range. Not that you would need it though. I mean, you can run these guns really fast and efficiently inside of 50 yards. That's where they shine. And that's why they were, they were essentially made in the beginning. They were a CQB style firearm. So max effective range, not so important, but it's something to consider. These guns aren't gonna turn out high velocities. They're not gonna be, their rounds aren't gonna be dumping a ton of energy into a target. So for self-defense situations, are these gonna be able to hold up and compare to something chambered in a rifle caliber? No, not at all. I mean, rifle calibers, they're moving between 2,000 and 2,500 feet per second. That's a lot of energy they can dump into a target. And then we have pistol caliber carbines, which depending on what style round you're using, you're just over a thousand feet per second. So the velocity and energy dump just isn't there in these guns. Yeah, shot placement is still king, but if we all had perfect shot placement, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. All right, so what route should you do if you still want to do the pistol caliber carbine game? In my mind, AR9s are a great place to start. This is an Angstead Arms. It has a six inch barrel, five and a half inch rail. Phenomenal gun, runs great. $1,300 retail price on this. Some of you might think that's a little salty, 
but you're getting a lot of bang for your buck out of this gun. You basically pull it out of the box and it's ready to go. It's got a flared mag well, M-lock rail, SBA3 here on the back. That's a nice touch. Um, I just put this Lunar Concepts Split Fix on here, which is a great product. You guys should check that out. Um, but just a phenomenal gun. Last round bolt hold open. Makes those uh, mag changes a breeze. It's a great place to start in my mind. It's a little bit of an upfront cost, but you're going to be ready to go with an optic right out of the box. So this is the Angstead Arms UDP-9. It's probably one of their more popular offerings. Uh, they got some other stuff on their website, stuff chambered in 45 ACP. They got some integrally suppressed uh, platforms as well, so go check them out. You've all seen my Scorpion. Uh, great gun, but if we're talking price, it I have about $1,300 in that gun, so it took a little bit to get it to the point where I really liked it, and I could still add some stuff to it inc to increase the cost uh, just to make it a little bit better. But it's a great platform. It runs awesome. No hiccups on it. Don't go into it thinking, oh, I'm going to save money. I mean, unless you really want to keep it bone stock, but most people don't. There's just a lot to change on the CZ Scorpions. Getting into the higher price point stuff, we're talking about your Chris Vectors, your MP5s, whether from Zenith or any other company. We're talking about MPXs from SIG. These guns, you're not going to get into them for anything less than $1,800. It's just the facts of the matter. Now, they are great guns. I like the MPX. I like the MP5. And in fact, the MP5 would be my preferred choice for a subgun or a carbine chambered in 9mm. I still think it's the king of the hill. There are some deficiencies there. Obviously, it doesn't have last round hold open, but the guns run. There's a ton of aftermarket parts available for them. They're just a hall of famer in my mind. So I still would prefer the MP5 as my preferred pistol caliber carbine. I have a CZ Scorpion, but that's because of the price point. I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze to pay that kind of dollar figure to get into this genre of firearm. If you shoot competition, PCC competition, yeah, sure, it might it might be worthwhile. Or if you just want to shoot a ton and you want the best possible option, I think the MP5, MPX are, well, you won't have any complaints with them. All right, no matter what you choose, I would try to keep the barrel as short as possible. You're not gaining anything by going with a longer barrel. You're going to get a little bit increase in velocity but it is just not justified in my mind because the whole point of these guns, the first trait in my mind that makes these guns valuable is their compactness. Here I have Noah's AR9. You've seen this on the channel a lot. This is a custom built AR9 by Catawba Valley Armory. This is a phenomenal gun. I mean, just top of the line, side charger on it, Geisley rail, eight and a half inch barrel. That is as long as I'd probably go on a nine millimeter. I have an eight and a half inch blackout and it is the same, same length, same dimensions as this. Um, and if we're getting into that length, I would just rather have a rifle cartridge. Second piece of advice, I try to keep it chambered to nine millimeter. It's cheap to shoot. There's a ton of it out there. Uh, we're talking pistol calibers here. I don't think you're really gaining anything by going to 45. For those of you that are gonna say like, oh, 45 ACP and is the best and it, it'll steal your soul when it, when it hits you. Yeah, sure it will. It's, it's great for supp to suppress. It's still viable, it's still good. Um, I would stay far away from 40. Uh, you're really not gaining anything out of it there either. Plus there's a lot of these platforms aren't even chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson, so it's probably not even gonna be an option for you. But stick to nine millimeter, you're gonna get good capacity and you're gonna get tons of aftermarket parts and options for that cartridge. Last piece of advice, make it your own. Make sure it's something that you're gonna shoot, that you're gonna like. This isn't a high priority platform in my mind. It fills a very specific role. So I wanna have fun with it. I wanna like it. I want it to last. So if you're gonna put money into it, just make sure it's right for you. And I know that seems like a very general and bland statement, but seriously, if you're gonna sink money into the PCC game, make it worthwhile. All right, guys, I hope that gave you a little bit direction on where to go with this topic. If you have a bunch of guns already and you're just looking for that next buy, take a look at a pistol caliber carbine, either AR9, subgun, whatever it is. 
Uh, they're a ton of fun, bottom line. You can shoot them really fast. You can shoot them cheaply. Check them out. There's a lot of great options out there now. Let me know what you think down in the comments about PCCs. I'd be really interested to see what you have to say. Good luck down there. Who knows how this is going to turn out. Guys, if you like the video, hit that like button, share it with your buddies. Go check us out on Instagram and Facebook. We've got a lot of great content over there. And if you want to support Wise Man Company, go to wisemancompany.com because we got a lot of great products over there. Go check us out. We'll see you on the next video.